Okay, we'll just wait a couple of minutes for people to hop in. How's everyone's day been so far? First couple of days of class. Good. Very good. No. Uh, what year are y'all generally? I'm second year. Okay. What about the rest of you? Go ahead. I'm I'm a junior. Okay, cool. Are y'all excited for recruiting season? Do you feel ready? No. <laughs> Nervous mostly. You're gonna be great. It just you know, get your nerves out doing a couple of practice interviews. Um, yeah, we'll be good. um there's too much lead code grind in my head, so Go I'm kind of kind of burned out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel that. Although unpopular opinion, I uh, I think that more than lead code, what I find helpful is to like just do a quite literally a practice interview with a friend, and then have them like the whole setup, right? Like get on a Google Doc and ask you the question and then you have to like talk it out with them um, and then just go over there's like a link I found that has like the 10 like 10 algorithms you need to know or something I can drop it in the chat um, I find like reviewing that very helpful no your default geeks for geeks link I'll send it in a bit. So do we just ask questions? Uh, no, I'm going to start. I'm just giving people a couple minutes to join and then I'll start. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So welcome to the data structures breakout room. Um, as you all, um, I don't have a good gauge on everyone's year, but just for some kind of context. Uh, so data structures are uh, kind of, as, as the name suggests, they are uh, kind of ways to store the data that you would be using to make whatever um, calculations or draw whatever conclusions you're trying to draw. Right, so clearly um, the magic of computers is they can take a lot of data and make it something useful, right? Um, but what we want to understand is, or the way to use data structures is as a tool um, in order for you to solve a bigger problem. So uh, no one really cares, how do I store like 500 numbers in the best way? Like that's not useful. It might be something like, I want to find the average of all of these numbers, right? Um, and then that begs the question of what's the best way to store these values so that um, one, I can save the most amount of space possible and two, I can reduce the amount of time it takes for me to access that data, right? So there's different use cases where different, different data structures end up being the most convenient ones to use um, based off of those two reasons. So, and at any point, if you have questions, like just feel free to unmute and uh, unmute and speak it up. I will have the chat open just in case, but yeah. So there are four, four main data structures that I'd say be most familiar with. These are the four. For those just hopping in, we just started, so you're right in the right place. But these four data structures are uh, pretty much the main ones used during technical interviews. 
um, you have the array, array list, hash set, and hash map. So first we'll talk about what, what each of them are, what they look like, but the way to evaluate which data structures to use is going to be by this column on the right side, which is understanding what operations and properties those data, set, those data structures have. And based off of that, you can decide which data structure is the best to use for that context. So this is gonna be a little interactive, so I encourage all of you to unmute yourselves, turn your cameras on if you want. Um, but who can tell me like what an array is um, and if you want to take a stab at what its what its properties might be in terms of like the um, the time complexity or the, the time complexity in order to do some of the operations an array is just a list of numbers I guess yeah yeah so it doesn't have to be numbers it um, or right, a list of anything. Right, right a list for sure so is it, um, is it size dynamic? That means can you change it over time or is it size pretty set? Size is set. Size is dynamic. Yeah, so yes. in fact, both of you are correct, right? So it depends on the language, right? So that's another thing about technical interviews is you get to choose what language you want to do the interview in, right? So in Python, for example, arrays would be, have dynamic value, dynamic sizes. Right, but in um, C or C++ or even Java for that matter, um, it's pretty set. Or you would have to you would have to keep changing it in Java, but you kind of deal with it like it's set. What about other things? So for a visual, right, arrays are um, often represented like two brackets and a list of things inside of them. Um, so you might think of how do you access an array? Right, which would beg the question of how easy is it to insert, um, you know, read a value or delete from the array. Does anyone want to take that question? Good by index. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you have to know where the element that you're looking for is in the array in order to access it. Um, so often that means that you have to iterate through the array to find your value. So often that's an O of n. Um, that's an O of N like time complexity. Uh, similarly for deleting, you have to go through it and find it. Um, there are constraints now, like we talked about, where uh, deleting is not really super easy because everything is kind of in its set place, right? And doesn't intuitively like merge the two halves back together. So deleting is not convenient in arrays. Um, inserting, similar thing where it's kind of a fixed size or at least fixed positioning. So inserting is not easy. Um, but a plus side of arrays is it's easy to order things in it, right? And often that is a great use case for arrays. So the th two things I'd say take away is arrays are good for when you have have an ordered type of list, right? Um, and you aren't changing the list around too much. So you aren't trying to insert, you aren't trying to delete. Often you're just trying to iterate through access. Um, often you'll receive data into your method as an array. What about array lists? So this is pretty specific to Java. Are those like vectors, sort of? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. okay. I mean C++ vectors. I believe so, yeah. So array lists, you can think of as kind of cards, is the way I think of them. So you have a card, and the card has a value, and it also has two pointers that points to the card before it and the card after it. All right, so it kind of tells you, um, you know, your value at that place in the list, but it gives you information about who it's related to um, in, in the entirety of the list, right? Uh, you can give other values to it, so like, um, if you want to, but those are like kind of the main uh, fields in an array list. So does anyone want to take a stab at what uh, advantages this provides over array in terms of these properties? or what similarities it has with an array as well. Isn't it easier to insert and delete? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like we talked about, right, the array list card will have fields that kind of point to its before or after, depending on how you structure it. Could have both, could have one or the other. Um, and you just have to change those values, right, based off of what you delete. You manip manipulate the values on its neighboring cards. Exactly. So that's an advantage to an array. What about 
is a dynamic in size? Yes. Yeah, for sure. So that's awesome. Um, you don't have to know what size you want it to be to start with, right? You can keep adding to it. Um, what about, um, so can someone tell me what the time complexity is to insert a value into an array list? I'm not too familiar with like the array list, but I think like compared to an array, uh, uh, you would have to wait for the array to be declared first before you make any edits while the array list is like, I get, I guess more of like a dynamic thing. You can do it whenever. Agreed. Agreed. Um, so yeah, that's, that's true. Um, doesn't quite answer the question, but that's true. So if you want to insert a value into the array list, how, how would you go about doing that? Um, so from the information I told you, a card or a node in the array list has the value. Um, and let's say it has like a pointer to the card before it and the card after it. Does it depend on where you're inserting? Okay. So so as the as the user, you have access, let's say, to just the head like you have like a pointer to the head so the first card in your array list so index is it still o of n exactly you still have to iterate through um, and go down that chain to find where you want to put it so while inserting is easier than array um, it's it's still o of n. if you just push a value to the back of the list um or the array list or vector that would be like still just would that be o of one that could be right. So if you have, if you keep track of what the tail that's called of the array list, the pointer to the tail, as well as the head, then yeah, that would be O of one. But if you don't, then that's O of n. So those are kind of like the design decisions you have to make. All right, what about a hash set? We're getting to our our buddies, the hashes. <laughs> Can someone tell me what a hash set is? Is everyone familiar with the hash set? All unique elements. Can you repeat? Sorry. They're all unique elements. Okay, so it's a set. So any a set always means that it has unique elements. At least correct. What else? What else? A set of keys that are put into um, a certain data structure based on what they are, I suppose, that are hashed to a certain uh, point. Yeah, yeah. So the way you might think a hash set is stored in memory, it still just like exists in space, right? Um, but what's unique about a hash set is like, uh, sorry, I can't see the names right now. Um, but like someone said earlier, you have, um, it's a set, so you only have unique values in the set. Um, and then also like Vineeth just said, it is hashed. So the way that um, you locate the value in your set is not iterating through the set or looking for that value in that iterative approach, but it is uh, through an equation called a hash equation. Um, so the value you're trying to, in, that, that is in the set is the input to this equation. It gives you a number at the end that then points you to the location in memory that that um, value is placed. So can someone intuitively, or if you know, tell me like what that means for um, insert time, access time, deleting time? All constant time? Yeah, O of one, um, because exactly, Jin. Um, it's, you just have to, it calculates where it is and then it finds it. Um, what about ordering? Can you order in a set? No, not really. Okay. Yeah. So in a case where you're trying to create some sort of sorted list, a hash set is not helpful, right? There's no ordering to it. What about is it dynamic in size? No. Uh, it is. Oh, it is. Okay. So you can add to this. You can add to the set at any time. You can remove things from the set at any time. It's flexible uh, with you. Yep. Um, and what about a hash map? Can anyone explain what a hash map is? Okay. 
So a hash map is kind of a mixture of um, a set and an array list, I'd, I'd say. So like it suggests, it's a map. So you have keys and you have values. Um, so what that means is you have a hash set, which is the keys, um, which are you know, something that identifies, you would say it's like an identifier for what you're actually looking for. So for example, um, if I had students, right, and I want to keep a track of all the students that I have, right, um, but students are, let's say it's an object, right, because the student has their name, they have their GPA, they have their, uh, the university that they go to, they have their age, they have a lot of information about them, right, it's like this whole object, right, but when I'm looking for students, let's say I'm the teacher and I just want to put in like the grade they received on something, I just want to look them up by their name, right, so that's a perfect use case for a hash map, because what I have first is a set, which is a set of names, which is unique, right? I have a set of names and each key in that set of names points to a value, which is the student object. Does that make sense? Does anyone, please speak up if you like want clarification. Um, quick question. So could you draw parallels between a hash map and like what dictionaries do in Python? Because those are like also key value pairs. Yeah, I believe I believe dictionaries are uh, created on a like as as hash maps in the back end. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, yeah, so in that way, it's really convenient if you want, uh, yeah, you want to be able to like access something based off of something that's unique to it, um, and and store that separately. Um, so similarly, when it comes to inserting, accessing, deleting, right. Uh, since you're looking up the key in the hash set and then deleting its O of one. Ordering, again, not great in hash maps because you, um, again, the keys are stored in a hash set, so there's no concept of ordering there. The size is dynamic. Uh, you can add and remove as you please. Something unique to hash maps as compared to hash sets is that you can have more than one value matching to a key. Right, so you can have a key point to a list of things. So for example, if I wanted to um, keep track of all the students with the name Nisha, for example, right? I could have the name Nisha be in my set, or be a key in my map, and that points to an object that points to another object. You can kind of store that part as an array list, which we can get into later, but yeah. So those are the four main data structures to be familiar with. Um, feel free to ask clarification questions as we go. Um, and now the next part is we're going to go through a couple of examples and y'all are going to tell me what data structure to use here and why. Um, so the first one is if you're given a sorted array and a target value, return the index if the target is found. If not, return the index where it would be if it were inserted in order. So, oh, that's the, oh, yeah. so a couple of things to this. One, when you receive questions in a technical interview, they often allow you to set up the method that is receiving that in, receiving this input yourself. So you get to decide how you what data structure the input you're receiving is already. Um, so that's also a, something to think about. Um, so yeah. So this first example, you have this number, 1356, and you want to know the index of 5. Um, or if it doesn't exist, you want to insert it and then return where it is in the array. So first question would be, uh, what data structure would you want to receive this input as? An array or an array list? OK. Um, how would you compare which one you'd want to use? What is your logic for, what is your argument for each? Um, compared to hash, compared to hash map and hash shit, um, I guess the fact that they're ordered and um, the array is sorted, so it wouldn't, you couldn't really do that with a hash map or a hash set. Agreed, agreed. That's a really good point. Anyone else want to chime in on why they think one might be more advantageous to the other? Uh um, I would use a hash map, um, but like switch uh, what the key and the value is. So 
like my key would be the number and my value would be the index. Uh, and so like if I'm looking for say five, then like I see if it has this key, if it has a key, then I would know the value right away with O of one. And if I don't have the key, then I know it's not there. So if it's not there, you still want to insert it into this list and then return what its new index is. So do you think that would be harder or easier than in a hash map or if you had an array or array list? Uh, I guess that part would be harder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think your intuition there is really good for if you're just trying to look it up. Um, I think that's a really good point. But because we're trying to still insert it at the end of the day, uh, it'll be harder because in your case, then how do you find, how do you even find, go about finding the ones that are neighboring, right? Um, so yeah. Uh, so array versus array list, does anyone have thoughts there? What did you use in a, um, I'm thinking that I would use an array list since an array list can change in size versus an array that, um, can. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, the dynamic or the ease of inserting and deleting, specifically inserting in this case in an array list, is the, is the reason I would prefer an array list over an array. Um, but to that point, what, uh, what would be the time complexity of doing this? Would it be helpful to like contextualize the solution a little bit more before we jump to that or is everyone all in their head? Go ahead, sorry. Oh, all then, linear time? Mm-hmm, and why? Because you'd have to iterate through the array and at worst you have to iterate through all n elements of the exponents. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, in, in the most rudimentary case, you have to go through every element to find it and then add if you need to, right? Um, there are ways to optimize that, doing various types of like starting in the middle, looking at only the second and first halves, things like that, um, assuming that this is ordered, which I think it is. So there are optimizations beyond that, but yeah, at its rudimentary level, that's, that's the best way to go about it. Um, space complexity wise, do you, have to create any other data structure to store anything? Someone I haven't heard from yet. So that's Eric, Bobby, Zachary. I guess not. Um, yeah, so if you used an array initially, and assuming like array has uh, fixed size, let's assume you're using a language where array has fixed size, you would have to create a new data structure, right? Um, in order to return the, let's say you have to return the array, the new array, right? Um, so if you have to do that, that's another reason to prefer array list because that is not, you're not having to create a new data structure. So your space complexity is better. Okay, moving on to the next example. Um, if you have two sorted integer, integer arrays, num1 and num2, you wanna merge them into one sorted array. So how would you go about that? So you got these two arrays. And you wanna output this. So now they're telling you your, your inputs are arrays. So keep that in mind. Using ArrayList? Okay, and okay. yeah, defend, defend your answer. So what I was thinking is you could have pointers to the first element of both of them. And then as you insert elements into your output array, um, which you could either make an array or an array list, um, you could increment the respective pointers so we could put um, one in, increment the pointer for nums one. Mm -hmm. um, then I guess just put a two in, increment the pointer for nums one again. 
put the other two in, increment numbers two and so on. Yeah, yeah, that strategy definitely works. Um, so why an array list versus an array in this situation? I guess flexible size, maybe. Hmm. Okay, so does size flexibility matter in this context? Hmm. I guess, I guess not because you know the size of both the arrays mm -hmm. initially. Right. Yeah. So, could you just use an array for it? Exactly. Um, and why? Like, what is the argument for preferring an array versus an array list in this case? Like, in a space complexity way. Array lists just take up more space, I guess. Yeah, they both in in a big O sense they take the same amount of space because they take up they're going to take n n plus m right is the amount of space they're going to take up. But there's a lot more overhead to creating an array list, right? Because you have to like specify the value, the like node before, the node after. So I guess like that individual, right? Like you have to create those nodes or those cards, so those objects like inherently take up slightly more space than just using a basic array. Um, which will just you know store it in order. Um, so it's things like that that you should think about when you are determining which data structure to use is you know, what is useful, right? Like don't overkill, right? It's kind of the what gets the job done. I don't want to make it really fancy. I just want to get the job done. Is everyone following? You get thumbs ups. Okay. All right, the third example. So let's say you have a list of edges that you receive um, that includes, they're like these tuples that have a parent and a child relation. Um, you want to first, let's ignore the second half of this question. First, you want to build a tree out of these tuples. So for example, you receive this list that has A, B, A, C, C, D, X, A. And what that tells you is this, this graph would be built specifically because A, B means that A has this child B AC means A has a child C, C has a child D, X has a child A. Um, so it might be helpful to first take a minute and think about how you would go about solving this problem. So I'll give you a minute or two to think about it in pen and paper, um, and then we'll regroup. This was a Facebook interview question, by the way. Are we still just using those uh, four data structures from earlier? Um, you're welcome to use whatever you want to use, but um, you can do this with only using those four data structures. Thank you. 
No rush, feel free to give me a thumbs up when you feel ready, but um, there's no rush. Already? Okay. Uh, someone share their idea, preference. People haven't spoken yet, but if they don't speak up, then we can go. Um. So I was that an array list would be better, and I chose um, an array list like over things such as a hash set or a hash map because. Um, like when you have a list, the whole purpose is to maintain an order. And if you're putting, or if you're like entering your data values into a hash map or a hash set, you're not necessarily guaranteed to um, get those same values back in order. So that whole like maintaining order concept, because if you're trying to go back to the root of the tree, then you would be able to like iterate over, or like or iterate back over all the values in an array list versus a hash set or a hash map. So, so that's why I chose an array list. Uh, array list for what part of this question? Is that like for how you receive the data or for how you go about like solving the problem? For how I go about like solving the problem, like returning to the root of the tree. Okay, so can you talk us through that algorithm then? Um, so like how are so you figuring out what the root of the tree is? I guess like the way I thought about it was like since you are entering like I guess the different family members um, like in order you're not necessarily able to get that order through a hash set or a hash map um, but like in terms of yeah I'm not actually I'm not sure. Um, okay, no problem. That, that makes a lot of sense that you want to maintain ordering because um, that's how you receive the data right? Uh, I'd ask you to rethink that solution though, because uh, basically what you want to do is like create. Could I um? Go ahead, Vinny. Yeah, thanks. Uh, um, so what I thought of was um, you could keep track of. So I would want to get the data through an array or an array list. Um, I guess to not overkill it, I guess an array. And when I iterated through the through. I would default start by setting the top um, just to pick something as the uh, for the I guess in this case the a the first element of the first thing and then if I ever saw that element again as the child um, what would you call it edge node I would then say okay put its parent as the new um, top and I would put all of these into and so I would iterate through that array. Um, that I would receive um, while updating the top and also putting, uh huh. Yeah, go ahead. And also putting these um, into a hash map as key value pairs. And then basically you put at the top um, and progressively get values from the map and, like, I guess work your way down. Okay, yeah. Um, you're, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Um, so I'm going to take a step back first before I guess we go about like fleshing out this algorithm and talk about, uh, you know, how do you go about building a tree? I think that'll be helpful context for then everyone to hypothesize how to do this. So what is a tree, right? So it's, it's exactly what it looks like here. It's a set of relations between 
uh, different nodes, as they're called, right? Uh, and nodes have values, right? So here we just gave the values as the as X, A, B, C, D, like the names of these nodes. So you might think of this like a family tree, for example, right? So there's some sort of relationship between children and parents, um, the same way like your parent might be here and your that parent's child, so you come here. Um, and, and, and that's what you want to express through the tree. Right? You want to express that relationship as a series of whole, of like many, many nodes, right? Um, so the first thing, anytime you get a tree problem, the first thing you want to think about is what is a node going to look like? How do you want to structure a node, right? So in this case, what is our node going to look like? So what the node you can, you can structure however you want, right? So what information is important to us in this node? Take a stab at that. Is it the parent? Okay, who's its parent? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, that's that's the way it is. Yeah. Okay. Wouldn't you have like the left child or the right child? Mm -hmm. You could represent that as like an array list of children, maybe. Mm -hmm. What else? Data. The data. Yeah. Anything else? So that's about it, right? In our case. Um, uh, only pushback I'd give is on parent. So just because of convention, we tend to make trees, we think about them in a top-down sense. So you're at a node and you think about who's below it, right? So you like know the parent and you think about who its children are. Um, we tend to, that's just kind of the norm, but you definitely could include like a pointer back to the parent. And that there definitely are use cases where that's helpful um, to know who, who your parent is like very easily and directly. Um, this is just not one of them. But yeah, the other reason I would say in this case to prefer your list of children rather than your list of parents is because of how you receive the input data. You have the name of the parent and then you get its child, right? So that just kind of perpetuates that top-down relationship ideology there. Okay, so this is your node, right? So you want to create, this is uh, kind of what you're going to translate, let's say you can like already translate the data to these types of nodes. Now from there, you want to go and like build out the tree, right? So again, this is your input. So how are we gonna go about doing that? Wouldn't you create a pair for every, I mean, create a node for every pair? And then um, if there's like a pair such as like AC where um, A is the parent, then you could add it to an existing node. But if it's like a new parent, then you would um, create your own node. Yeah, yeah, 100% right. Um, what, the way you said that, what, what itch does that make you all have in your brain of, what type of data structure would be helpful. So to reiterate what she said, you said you create a parent if it doesn't exist, right? You create that node or a child node. You create the node if it doesn't exist, and then you add the child to its list of children. If it does exist, you access that node and add the child to its list of children. Hash that? Hash, yeah, hash map. Hash map, right? Why? Because of the whole key value pair. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what would be the key and what would be the value? Would the so, key be the actual parent and then the value would be like the children itself? 
Mm, not quite, not quite. That is a way to do it. Um, Maybe a slightly more intuitive way. So your key is often like, what information do you have access to from the get-go, right? You have the names of the nodes, right? So your key is going to be the names of these nodes because then you can have that easy lookup, right? Again, the reason we're preferring hash map or hash set to any list or array is because we care about looking things up quickly. We're doing a lot of lookups, right? We're looking up if this parent exists and then adding to it, right? Um, and then the value we want it to point to will be the actual node, that object. So then we can manipulate its list of children, right? That way we're creating that map. Um, so there's a hash map to store map of. Okay. So yeah, we can um, go about, like you can go about exploring like how you would implement this on your own time, but uh, that's the main takeaway here. Um, but this problem has a second part as well. So say that it wanted you to return the root of the tree as well, right? So it wants you to return uh, the node that you're looking for, or the node that is the roots, in this case, x. Um, but it also wants you to construct the entire tree. So we already said we're going to construct the tree by using hash map. Specifically, we're going to iterate through this list and check in this set of names so so a hash map has it has a function called i think it's called like uh, let's see this map is called map i think it's called map dot um key set maybe something like that where it returns returns hash set of keys this is probably not the exact syntax, but something to that effect. Um, so you have access to that, to essentially you have access to the list of unique nodes, right? Um, and that includes all the children and all the parents, right? Um, and then it points to the node that then has the information that tells you who its children are for that node, right? So let's say you wanna return the root. Um, so first tell me like what would be the logic of figuring out what the root is um, and then we can come up with the best way to figure that out. Also, please, 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 at any point, if you have questions, just chime in. My hint to you will be, think about what's unique about a root in terms of, compared to all the other nodes in the tree, what is unique about a root, the root of a tree, which again, here is x to the top of the tree. It's the only element that isn't a child of anything. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have anything. Yeah. My parent. Could you use like a hash map or a hash set to like keep track of all the um, parent nodes and I guess just remove them if um, it turns out that they're a child or something? Parent nodes? Um, I think you're saying what, what I think you're saying, but clarify a little bit. Like, okay, so the parent nodes, I mean, talking about like A, A, C, and X in the example here. So like the first ones, you could keep track of those. And if it turns out that for one of them, they're, they're a child or um, 
their child node, then you can just like okay. take them out of the map. Maybe? So how would you uh, store that? Hmm. Actually. Actually not a map on second time, maybe like an array list. Okay. Hmm. Defend your proposition. Hmm. So the other thing is every structure you use takes up more space, right? So try to use things that we already have. We've already created this hash map. It has this set. This right. Set one thing that sets a root apart from every other node, and that's that it has no parent, right? It, is, it never appears as a child, another way to say that. Push you in the right direction. Would you check how many times a specific element appears as a child? Maybe. Anyone else? I heard you speak once, Eric. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking. OK, OK. Um, could we go through the hash map, uh, checking like all the children of each node? And maybe like store them in a in another hash map, okay. and then just traverse through through that hash map, not traverse to the list of names, mm -hmm. checking which one is not part of that hash map we made, and that will be the root. Yeah, that sounds like a good strategy to me. Um, sure. So essentially, you said create. So you already have access to all of the nodes, right? You have something that tells you what all of the nodes are and you're saying create something else that keeps track of who all the children are, right? Is that what you said? Yep. And then you compare the two almost to an exclusive or, right? To figure out who's in that first list that's not in that second set, right? Yep. And it should be only one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I agree. Even if they're multiple roots for whatever reason, if they're like two separate gas, it would only be only those would appear. Um, but my question to you is then, why a hash map defend that? Uh, just to be able to compare in constant time? Wait. So, yeah, because we're gonna be checking each name of the, of the nodes, and we're gonna be like, okay, is this name in the list of children? Mm -hmm. And that comparison, can be done in constant time if the list of children is in a hash map. Okay, that's true. Uh -huh. um, yeah. But in a map, right, what would your key and value be? Uh, the key would be a, um, the name of the children and the value is going to be the note. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So going back to what you just said, you are checking kind of the names, right, in both. Uh -huh. The names in of children versus the names of all the nodes that exist, right? Yep. And you yes. already have this mapping of names to nodes, right, in this list of everything. So uh -huh. do you need that mapping in the second set? Do you need it to point to its node? Okay, well, we already have the, the mapping, right? So I, I think we don't need it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we, we just need an array, an array of uh, names of children almost we still like that o of one lookup um, okay yeah uh, so it's not a hash map then uh, i don't know i cannot think of any other structure uh, hash set, hash set. Hash? oh okay oh okay i didn't know that <laughs> Okay, yeah, so, so a set is just a collection of things, right? 
Um, something else to keep in mind, what makes a hash set important or useful here is that it's a set, so it can only have one item uh, or one, uh, it, it doesn't have any repeats, right? Um, so for example here, like if my input had this twice, it wouldn't add A and B into the, uh, into the map again or into the set again or like A does occur multiple times, right? So since the key part of a hash map is a hash set, we don't have to worry about checking for repeats. It does that on its own, right? So similarly, we would want to store it in a hash set, that list of children or that collection of children so that we can avoid repeats and we singularly have like, the names of whatever nodes we're looking for. Um, and yeah, and uh, earlier you said like go back through this hash map and then uh, find all of its children and add it to that set. Um, so another uh, another optimization you can make is instead, like while you're going through your first iteration and creating this hash map, you're already iterating through this list, right? So your children only occur on like the second half of the tuple. So you can create that set as you go. So that way you save time. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Does that solution make sense? Anyone have any questions? How would you get the intuition of all of that during a con interview, I guess? Yeah, yeah. So um, one, you're not alone. The interviewer often helps. Um, so it's really important, I'd say, to explain your thought process and explain what you're thinking so that they know where to step in and, and push you in a particular direction. Otherwise, you often get caught up in like you just like go off the rails on some direction and you just start coding it and they just don't know what you're thinking. So they can't help you and say, no, no, that's not a good way to go. Right. Other things to think about were like the things that we pointed out at the beginning. I think Nisha pointed it out where, uh, you know, we were thinking of exclusively adding things one thing at a time, right? We wanted to map names to, to, to objects, right? So things like that give you a sense that it's hash map, right? Um, if you care about looking things up efficiently, if you don't care about ordering, it's probably a hash map or a hash set. It's a hash set if all you care about is the value. It's a hash map if you care about having something connect to something else, right? Um, arrays and array lists are only useful when, I wouldn't say only useful, for generally they are the preferred case when ordering matters. Right, keeping things in a specific order because you can't do that with a set. Um, other properties of sets to think about are, uh, again, the like, you can only have an object in there one time. So I'll take you back to slide two and to answer your question is think about these five things. What do I need to solve this problem, right? So if you think about what you need and then you think about do I want to be able to insert efficiently? Do I want to be able to access things efficiently? Delete, does it need to be ordered? Does its size need to be, do I need to keep, does it, do I want it to be dynamic, right? These things will help you decide which of these to use. Does that make sense? Like which tool is going to be most effective at helping you accomplish your goal? Yeah, that makes sense. I'm kind of confused on the last part. Um, where you get the, yeah, so um, would you use a hash set to get like the list of children? And if so, like, what would the B be? Or would, go ahead, go ahead. Um, yeah, so basically you're following up to like creating this hash map, right? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm saying is when you're creating the hash map, what you can also do is simultaneously create another hash set that's the that's just the name of children. So this just includes anything that occurs as the second name in a tuple, right? Uh -huh. So then at that point, um, so the reason this was a hint was after I've done all of this work, all of these things, is I can access just the key set of this first hash map. 
Um, and so what that'll give me is I'll one, I'll get, uh, so I'll, I'll call this one. I will get a list of, or I'll get a set rather, of all nodes in graph, right? Oh, okay. And then this will create a set of all children in graph, right? Yeah. Um, and when I think about the relationship of the root node, in this case, X, right, is it never occurs as a child, right? So, oh. yeah, at that point, what I can do is, um, you know, like quite literally iterate through this um, and remove, I can remove a, like a value from this if it occurs in this, oh, sorry, the other way around. I can remove a value in my set of all the nodes if it occurs as a child, right? Oh, okay. And, and that leaves you with whatever is the root. And okay. then again here, someone earlier said to use a list. The reason I would argue to use a set over a list is because is if a child occurs more than one time, we don't want to list it more than once. Oh, okay, okay. Makes sense? And then, yeah, that makes a lot more sense, thank you. Yeah, glad I could clarify that. What exactly uh, is the node? Oh, sorry. What? Here, we'll go ahead. Cool. All right, I'll, just a quick question. Uh, what exactly is the node for the hash map? The node? Like the, uh, what is his name, node? Um, oh, yeah, so the node is this. So we created, we created an object that has the value, um, in our case, is the name of the, the node, <laughs> and then its list of children. Um, so, so go ahead. Sorry, so that would have to be like an array list or something? Uh, it would be like in Java, it would be an object. So you define a class or an object that does that is that. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, would these slides be available to us on the IEEE Slack? Uh, yeah, I can share it. I can share it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Or shall I move on? All right, I will move on. Um, feel free to ask questions, we can go back. Um, but the last thing is sometimes they ask like theoretical questions about data structures, right? So one question I kept asking, um, which is something you should definitely think about is, when do you use a hash set versus a hash map? Does someone want to answer that? Would you use a hash map if you have um, multiple, or like use a hash map if you were um, trying to store objects or like not like one value? You said this earlier, um, yeah. Um, that's definitely a use case for hash maps. What else, what else? I think a hash set for, if you're just trying to keep track of if you've seen something or if, um, yeah, if you've seen something versus a hash map, if you want to count like iterations of something or like data regarding something that you've seen. Okay. Um, so in our earlier case, like technically you could, in a hash set too, right? Like you could have objects, right? So even if it's like something that holds a lot of data or something like that and is encapsulated in some sort of object, you could still put that in sets, in, in a hash set. But the main difference here is how you want to access the values, right? Like if you care about just storing it um, and like figuring out what's unique and you just want like that set, then a hash set is perfect. So something like that list of children. Um, but on the other hand, if you want to be able to find something based off of something about it, right? So in our earlier case, we wanted to find that node based off of the name of the node because that's all we had access to but we wanted to store a lot more information than just the name of the node, right? Um, that's when you use a map. So when you, to reiterate, you use a map when you wanna find something based off of something about it, and you use a set when you just want to create a unique set of the whatever. 
Another use case from hash maps, um, and this kind of goes into question two as well, is you can have the same, you can have a key kind of list to point to, you can have the key point to anything, right? So there is a, uh, there is a format where people will have keys point to array lists. So you can have the same key point to effectively many things. Um, so for example, uh, let's say I wanted to like store everyone with um, like a GP of above like 2.0 or something like that, right? Between the range of 2.0 and 2.5, let's say. Um, that could be like my key, right? Or something like that. This is a complicated example. Let me do a different one. Um, and just someone with the same name, right? So let's say everyone who has the name Sanika. Right, so I could have Sanika point to an array list, right? So it points to the head of an array list. So the first card that has, you know, my name, whatever about me, has my last name, has um, information about me. And then maybe I point to another card that has uh, another Sanika, right? So in that way, I can have the same key effectively point to more than one thing. Does that make sense? So the key doesn't actually point to more than one thing, it just points to an array list. Does that make sense? Does, does that make sense what the difference is? You want to say? Yeah. Um, so to that point, do hash maps always have O of 1 lookups? Not if you have one key pointing to several values, right? Right. So it's not pointing to several values. It's pointing to one value. But if that's pointing to a bunch of things, then you have to look yeah. through it. So it doesn't always. So um, again, like data, data structures are tools for whatever you're trying to accomplish. So you want to optimize and, and gain efficiency where you can. Um, but sometimes it's helpful or useful to kind of do a mix of two um, data structures. Um, and then we talked about this earlier, but why do hash sets and maps have O of 1 lookups? And these are all theory questions I've been asked in interviews for, for FYIs. Is it because we um, we get a hash code from the name for the key from the keys and then that hash code is mapped into an index so we can like look for something by just having the hash code? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The input right the key that you are looking for in either a set or a map is the input to equation that gives you the location of that um, element right in yeah. or wherever so um, that's the hash equation exactly yeah y'all did well so that's all i have for you um i think we're doing good on time so yeah i think Main takeaways are data structures are a tool to help you achieve whatever you're trying to achieve. Uh, so often they won't directly ask you, like, use a hash set to do blah, 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 right? Like they'll ask you to do blah, um, and you have to figure out what the best data structure to use is in order to do that. Um, and then the things to think about when picking which data structure to use are these things. Uh, I would highly recommend knowing these four data structures like the back of your hand. Um, they're the ones that come come up the most. Uh, there's like a, a saying that like when in doubt use a hash map or hash set, which is honestly when in doubt I would use a hash set or a hash map. So that's, that's a fair assessment I think. Um, unless again, unless you care about ordering that's when that's a red flag for a set or a map. Um, yeah. Good question. Uh, are there more hash structures? Because I know there's also hash tables in Java. Yeah. Yeah. So a hash table, I believe, is that a structure or is that's what's created? Right? No, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I yeah, I might be wrong, but I think hash table is like what's created to match uh, the answer to your equation and the set. it's essentially a set. it's a hash set hash table i'd say is a hash set um, okay. but there, okay. there might be other data structures that use this hashing concept in order to decrease lookup time okay but you would say those two are like the main ones to, to yeah. master 
Okay, yeah. thank you. I like your word, not to be familiar with you, Master. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, any other questions? I sent you something in the uh, in the chat, I think. Okay, do you want me to answer that publicly or? Um, I mean, actually, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, so, um, so his question generally has to do with uh, uh, how a lot of these interview questions have like algorithms concepts, um, having not taken algorithms yet, um, as well as like leap, leap code problems are hard. Um, and so how do I recommend like going about that? Honestly, I think leap code questions are really hard too. Um, I like even the easy ones, I remember like doing sophomore year, junior year, and like they were hard. Um, I don't think like they are I personally like don't think they're like the most representative of what makes a good software engineering like interview um, because like I said earlier during the group thing like the most important thing in my opinion is how you talk about the problem and how you express your thought process right so I would say always take time to first think about your strategy then explain your strategy uh, defend why you think it's a good strategy, right? Do some time complexity analysis, space complexity analysis, um, and then solve it. Often the interviewer will help you out, right? So I will literally be like, does this sound like a good direction to go, right? If I like propose this, a, a way of going about it, I'm like, does this sound good? Um, so involve your interviewer and almost like make them help you, right? Go in the right direction, because it is a conversation. I and mean, I think what makes a successful software engineer is uh, is your thought process, right? That problem solving. Um, and, and no one gets it right on the first try, right? Um, mm. So that's what I'd say. It's definitely like not impossible to to do this without having taken algo. Like algo helps, but at the same time, like you'll learn stuff in algo that um, you don't use <laughs> either. Um, I'd say, so the link I sent earlier was like 10 algorithms to know, I can send it again, um, is really, really helpful because most, most interviews are going to be like variations of these problems, right? Uh, it's not, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so, and, go ahead. Uh, sorry, um, what would be the best way to practice? Would it be like Lee code or something like that? Yeah, so my, my de facto way of practicing is grabbing a friend, um, which I'd be more than happy to do, and having them act like an interviewer um, and give me a problem. Often the problem is from leak code, but just the process of you having to talk about it out loud and walk through your solution in that timed manner and explain it to someone, I think is better practice than bogging away on leak code. Mm, okay. Very unpopular opinion, but I stand by it. <laughs> Do you have any like do's and don'ts for technical interviews? Because I know you mentioned like ask a lot of questions, but like what are some things that we should not do or like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd say never jump into the code directly. So first, first things first is clarify, right? So make sure you understand the problem. So especially something like this third problem, like that's a pretty like confusing convoluted problem, right? Like what exactly are you trying to do, right? So clarify those things at the beginning, like am I understanding the problem correctly? Like, this is what I'm trying to achieve, right? Um, then from there, I'd say ask uh, clarifying questions at the input. So is the input received in a particular data structure, right? Um, what, is, what is considered like valid inputs, right? So things like, um, like, do you get, are all, like, can there be duplicates? right are you getting your input is your are you getting your input in order right can there be empty tuples right so stuff like that both tells the the 
the interviewer that you're thinking about edge cases and thus that kind of speaks to your thought process in, in terms of a testing sense and also in terms of how thorough you are in understanding holistically what the problem is um, and also helps you come up with a strategy, right? Because that helps you understand what assumptions you can or cannot make. If you don't clarify those assumptions, they like assume the default, right? Assume the worst. So for example, um, if you didn't ask if you can have null inputs, like they could assume that you can have null inputs, right? But if you clarify it and they go, no, don't worry about it, then you don't have to worry about it. And that saves you a lot of time and like effort writing those like specific exclusion cases, right? Um, and then from there, I'd say like, take a couple minutes to silently think about it on your own. So don't feel like you have to rush into answering the question, right? Take some time. I always have pen and paper in front of me and I brainstorm ideas of how to go about it, right? Come up with a plan. Um, and then sometimes if you have like multiple strategies you think you could go down, um, propose them to the interviewer saying, I thought of two strategies. This is one, this is the other. This is how they compare with each other. Um, and thus, I think we should go with this one, or you might say which one, you know, you might want to include them in that conversation, right? Like, do we care about time complexity more, or space complexity more, right? Let's say there's a trade-off between your two solutions, and then they'll give you an answer, right? So really, like, take your time to, like, come up with something, but, like, not too much time, right? So involve them in that decision-making process, um, and then start coding. Right. So I think the biggest advice there is like, don't rush into the coding. Um, take your time to like come up with a plan so that then the coding goes more smoothly. Um, and then at the end, uh, test your code per se. So if you have enough time, maybe run through one of the example cases to make sure that the code works as intended. Um, and that also like shows them that you care about testing, which is really important in, in the industry. And don't forget to do complexity analysis. So time and space complexity analysis. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Another thing I'd say is don't get bogged down on trying to come up with the most efficient solution immediately. Um, so if you want, right, like it's better to have a working solution or a solution than no solution. Um, so even if it's not perfect, get something down. Sometimes it's good enough and they're like, yeah, that's fine. Um, and other times you do your first version and then they say, okay, let's go try to make this part of it more efficient. So, yeah. What are the most common um, things that you, are the most common things that you get, that um, we're gonna get asked in technical interviews, just those four structures, what about like strings and trees and I guess linked lists and so on? Yeah, yeah, I think you get asked array list questions. Um, you get asked tree questions. Um, sometimes you get asked design questions depending on the company. Some of the newer companies are doing design questions lately where it's like, uh, it's like a lot more of, uh, those are quite interactive generally, but it's like you want to it has to be like, like, like you'll create lots of objects and things like that and they interact with each other and, and things like that. Um, sometimes you'll have like tricky, you know, math ones where you're like finding like mean or median is a simple example, but um, something like that. Um, yeah. I'd say like if you had to deprioritize something, I deprioritize dynamic programming. I don't think it gets asked that often. Uh, unless you're applying to like a like an algorithm that's a trading company, then maybe. How would you like rank them in order of like if if you can? <laughs> yeah. Um I'd say like arrays, string manipulation and arrays. That's usually like a round one type of question. Then I'd say trees uh, tree stuff is a type, trees and sorting, I, sorting can be around one or around two. I mean, it just depends on the company, but I'd say like string and array manipulation, then trees and sorting. Uh, and then I think that leaves dynamic programming as third. Okay. 
have a thorough understanding of like objects. All right, I think it's almost time to go back to the main room. So any more questions last minute? Okay, then let's move, move back. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.